Uh, hello and welcome to our presentation on uh, all of our shots used in our Wild Whiskey Final Cut. It's our actual video and just going to see what we do and what we did during it. Well, let me just apologise in advance for the uh, quality of the screen. The laptop is a bit dodgy. So, uh, yeah, bear with it, please. Thank you. Well, this is our, this is our ident that we had to, because in an earlier task, we had to make our own film distribution company. So, within that task, we made an ident for our company, and this is what we used for our film. This is our distribution company. Okay, so this is our first shot. It's how this is uh, establishing the setting and just the general premise of where it's where it is and what it's gonna what's gonna happen. Basically, this is obviously we're at a school, a college. It, the sign gives it, the bell gives it away, so it just leads to that conclusion. Um, also, we also used a Ken Burns shot. No, not Ken Burns. Uh, Dutch, tilt. Dutch tilt shot that helps with basically just tilting the the screen. This is a shows our capability with a camera and the uh, shots we can do. So this shot then uh, is a wide shot or an establishing shot of the setting. Uh, it shows the audience setting. Uh, the weather in the shot is dark, which we wanted to uh, basically reflect the horror genre conventions, which would be of a dark, uh, dim, uh, setting uh, and also you can see through this shot that the setting is kind of ramshackle but it certainly is compared to the rest of the school uh, which again fits in with the horror genre conventions of uh, um, you know settings that are a bit ramshackle and uh, not normal really and this next shot is the security camera pan uh, as you can see in the shot, it shows the detention camera, which again shows the audience uh, what the opening sequence uh, will be in, and uh, mainly the setting for it. And then you can see that by the 302, the, that is a stereotypical time for when school ends. Uh, and then it also introduces the characters to the audience and uh, shows them the setting and the narrative. As you can see the characters are really bored there and you can see the nerd doing work as is stereotypical. This shot is a long to mid shot of the protagonist walking up to the setting. Uh, obviously it shows the main character to the audience and we had a blank space, if you saw that, in front of the shot to introduce the main character, basically to set the audience up for the protagonist, which is going to come into view, show them the next shot's very important. It also shows the social group of the protagonist uh, to be the stereotypical uh, schoolboy, and uh, it progresses the narrative as well, as it shows him going into detention. As you can see, we also uh, showed that ours was a combined opening sequence and title sequence by the title there. And the shot leading from this is just a continuation of the previous shot, basically showing him walking up to the setting. Uh, and you can hear the footsteps, which we uh, use as a sound effect. This shot is one of the uh, close-up of the protagonist walking into the room and the detention sign prop makes it very clear to the audience if they haven't noticed already that it's a detention. And um, it's a, it's a close-up so it really uh, focuses the audience in on the fact that it is a detention which is where the setting will be. This shot 
is one of the protagonists walking to the teacher and giving us the paper. We frame the shot as well between the phone and the arm, which t was to make it interesting to the audience and a bit different from what we already had. Uh, it also frames the protagonist, again showing how important he is to the audience and showing the protagonist. And it also moves the narrative, as you can see him giving the slip of paper to the teacher. So after that, we have the reaction shot, the protagonist looking around the setting at the other characters in a mid shot. Uh, again, it makes the audience engage with the protagonist, and it, uh, because it's been quite a few shots in a row now that show the protagonist, it's um, really showing the audience, due to the amount of screen time he gets, that he's important to the plot. The next one is a close-up of the teacher looking at the note and telling him to sit down. Uh, we have a title on the shoulder, just to make it a bit more interesting than the plain titles. Uh, and it's also in red, which fits in with the horror genre conventions of the red sort of colour scheme, because uh, it has the symbolism of blood. Uh, also, we've made it quite small, so it doesn't distract from the narrative, so that the audience isn't put off by the title and can concentrate on the narrative and the plot of the story. Also, uh, the shot is a low angle, so it shows the uh, audience even looking up the character uh, to the teacher, which shows his social group to be uh, a teacher very important. Sorry, so uh, that next shot there. is of the protagonist uh, walking to his seat. Uh, if you saw the cut there, it's the, uh, the protagonist walking in front of the camera and then cuts to him walking to his seat, uh, which we made to make it continuous and very interesting, sort of a slick cut between the shots. It's also a very short shot and because the previous shots we've got uh, so far are basically the same sort of length. Uh, and this shot sort of changed it up and makes it a bit more interesting because it's quite a short shot in comparison to the others. This is a uh, low level shot of the protagonist sitting down in the seat, and it's a different shot, different angle to the rest. Uh, also, the sound effect of the chair scraping is stereotypical of school, and the loudness shows the silence of the situation, which is stereotypical for detention. So this mid shot, the protagonist sitting in his seat, shows the out of uh, focus girl character showing up with the, with the feet up on the phone, which again shows uh, the social groups of that um, uh, stereotypical schoolgirl. Uh, also, because it's another shot of the protagonist, there's even more screen time for the protagonist, which again shows how important he is to the audience. Okay, so this is the first of many clock shots that we do actually put into the opening sequence. It's a close-up of the clock. It shows it's, uh, it's ten past three, which again is stereotypical time after school. And we have the titles come up here along the, uh, the hand, uh, showing producer Josh Portman. Okay, so once again, we've come back to the security camera. And... Um, this uh, it shows it's a later time. It's the same time shows on the on the clock second though it's ten past three. This time I, uh, as the main character, are now in, uh, is now sat in uh, his seat. And I've got the television camera, so it shows how how bored the uh, the students look, and uh, it kind of forebodes the um, in fact it's all quite mellow at the minute. What what could happen later on? Because this is an over-the-shoulder shot of Islam Khan who plays a nerd doing uh, his work, which is stereotypical for nerds, and shows his social group. And then it jumps, it jump cuts into this shot, a close-up of uh, Islam looking around, and his name comes up along the side of the pen again, which is not just bog standard. Uh, and obviously with the glasses, the iconic uh, symbol of a nerd as well being in there.
Okay, so similar as before, again, we come to a close of the clock. It shows that time has gone back by, but only slightly. So it shows that it, the time is moving slowly. Again, we have the titles with direct air microscopy here. This is quite an interesting, interesting shot. This is a two shot of Josh, as shown by the title, and it's Michael, whose title will come up in a second. Um, and basically, they're, gonna, they're having a little chat here to show that they are friends. Uh, so uh, you can tell that they are just typical uh, schoolboys who've probably been here before. They don't really care about the work, they're not doing the paper in front of them or anything, they're just talk, talking about football instead. Okay, and this is this carries on from that shot because we're an over-the-shoulder shot of uh, the teacher looking at these two while they're talking. And uh, if, if we press five a second, as you can see, Michael looks up, sees the teacher, looking, and it changes focus uh, to um, Michael realizing and looking down, and that cuts the conversation off. So that was uh, that. So it shows the teacher's authority. Again, we come here to another clock shot to show again time has gone by, and uh, with the title of Editor Nathan Pudney. After that, we come to another mid-shot of the girl, played by Eloise Pudney, whose name is Along the Boot, so again, it's not just bog standard, and she is on her phone and chewing gum, which shows the typical rebelliousness of the social group of the uh, high school girl. And yet again, we have another clock shot. Again, time has barely gone by. Um, and this time we have the cinematographer Milton Wordsworth. Okay, and now we're coming back again, once again, to the detention camp. Uh, and again, it shows the students being bored, looking not, like nothing's going on, basically. This scene, this entire thing so far has been pretty boring and dull. Nothing's happened. Um... And again, the, the, you can see the time has changed to the time it was in the clock shop beforehand. So yeah. Okay, this shot is um, a close-up of the protagonist, me, uh, yawning and then uh, putting her head down and going to, to sleep. This uh, moves the narrative along, as before we've had all these generic shots being repeated, the clock, then the security camera, then introduced characters and the clock, etc. Uh, so obviously me falling asleep there shows that uh, once again the situation is boring but at least I'm doing something now and again the girl in the background who's not paying any attention to it so it's uh, yeah that's that. Next we have this black screen which uh, shows the main character is asleep which links to now that something different is happening we previously we've had shots going straight into other shots now we have the, a sleeping protagonist with a blank screen something's always blatantly going to happen Uh, the ripple shows, well, something uh, seems it off, something's a little bit off, but it's obviously signifying him waking up as well. Here we have him questioning, well, he's on his own, he's in the room, he's, he's just woken up. He's just looked forward and there's the teacher's not there, so, um, and now, well, seemingly he's going to check the time. Yeah, as well, it's an over-the-shoulder shot. The as shoulder well. shot of the clock in the background, so link the time to everything else that's going on. Shit. Here we go, we have another uh, shot of the clock, which shows time going by again. But now it's actually 8 o'clock, so he's fallen asleep for quite a lot of time. And then again, we have a, another shot of the sound design, Bob Aladar. Next, we finally come to our shocking shot, which is as the protagonist gets up and walks away, it her street there. There's a Ken Burns, which zooms in onto well the teacher and the girl who have both been murdered, uh, killed. It's quite surprising. It adds to the shock factor because the audience has this has just happened, and it's very surprising. Next is a set of each a different set of. Um, flashes and uh, montage of uh, quick cut editing of each different character with a few shots of each, like what's happened to them, they're obviously dead. Here's some of her work. 
Hit another shot of her from the side. Here we have a, a low shot looking up at the nerd who's obviously well he's been killed, might by the rest of them. We have his glasses, which is a signifying prop. And here we have Michael, one of the students, who's that who's been killed also. He's very close up. And here we have a mid shot of me, Josh, who's obviously this throat slit, and we've also added a uh, filter over which adds to the effect of the quicker editing. Next we have a shot where the hand is in focus and it then leads on to the rest of the body which shows me and Michael, since we're both friends, we both died in the same sort of area. She links the characters. This is also an interesting shot because it's it's at an angle but it allows uh, the blood to be dripped on the wall. It's also uh, it's a handprint of blood, so it's also something important that's obviously happened. Something very violent, disturbing. And it's just a very, very nice shot. This is obviously, well, the, the teacher's obviously been injured. So you, you can see from the kind of rolled up sleeves which he's had previously and just the large clothing. And you can see the blood's pouring down. So obviously, so, well, he's been clearly injured and most likely killed. Which has happened to everybody. Here we have a, clo a mid shot close up of him still though filter still on which shows him drooping his head so he's lost his authority is now dead he is nothing anymore now we have a, a black screen which helps us transition we've now gone through each of the characters who has been killed now we've uh, transitioned on to the next part which now leads on to the main character who's obviously he's just left he he, isn't, he hasn't looked back hasn't realized what happened so now he's walking off and I'm going to, it's obviously an over shoulder shot which moves down to his hand and which reveals something quite interesting. It reveals the fact that his hand is now covered in blood, his watch his hand, it's all drenched down, which means he's obviously, must have been the killer and it's quite a, adds to the shock factor and it's really quite surprising. And um, oh. here we're going to have a closing up shot of uh, production of the made the film and uh, yeah. And here, uh, here's the While We Sleep. It was our final cut with all our, here's our shots and here's who it's made by. It's Mike Scully, just Portman and Ethan Putney. Okay, to work. Okay, let's go and upload that straight away. I'm yeah. gonna, I'm Paul. Right, come in.